Hi, everybody. Uh, Jason back here. I'm sorry it's been a while since I posted, uh, but I'm glad to be back and uh, um, hope everybody's looking to, forward to a good school year coming up. Um, this evening, I want to talk about the binomial theorem. This is something that's often overlooked in Algebra 2, but it's a great way to do the distributive property of Algebra 2 really, really easily. So let me show you what, how it works. Um, so for starters, I'm going to just write down um, a plus b squared. And before we do the binomial theorem, I'm just going to do this kind of the good old regular way with the distributive property. I'm just going to multiply this out. A plus b times a plus b. And we're going to use FOIL, uh, first outer inner last. So a times a is a squared. The outer terms, F O, O is for outer, A times B makes A B. The inner is B times A, another A B. And then uh, the last is B times B, that's B squared. So that is A squared plus two AB plus B squared. Okay, so let's talk about the binomial theorem. That is a way to get from here here. Uh, that wasn't much work, but suppose this wasn't a square, suppose this was like a, a fifth power or an eighth power. You've got a big problem on your hands if you get too big. Um, so uh, the way the binomial theorem works is you say, first of all, uh, number of terms, number of terms is one more than exponent. So we've got an exponent of two. This means we have three terms. Um, so first of all, we need to know what those terms are. So we're going to have blank. Uh, I'm going to write blank AB. I'll show you how this works. Plus blank AB plus blank AB. So AB are the two items in the parentheses. They're in each term. And uh, then I've got a blank out here that represents a coefficient. Um, and uh, so now we got to put powers on these A's and B's. And keep in mind, the powers always have to add up to this number, the two. So first of all, we're going to have A squared, B to the zero. Those add up to two. And then the A goes down one and the B goes up one. So this is going to be A1 and B1. And this is going to be uh, A0 and B2. And uh, so the next thing we need to know are the, the, the coefficients that go in the slots. And there's two ways to figure this out. There's what's called Pascal's triangle, which means you take a one and you draw a little line here. You draw another one on each side, and then a little line here, and then lines here and add these up to be two. And then a little line here, bring out a one. Uh, these add up to three and three. And basically, you pick the row that has the number of slots that you need. So that would be one, two, one for us. If we had four slots, it would be one, three, three, one. But one, two, one goes one, two, one, just like that. And uh, then you can just kind of see, well, B to the zero is one. That is really one A squared. This is plus two AB. And this is plus one, that's really a to the zero is really once. So this is really plus b squared. And that is what we got up here, one a squared plus two ab plus b squared. Let's talk about these numbers again real quick. Um, there's also what's called NCR on your calculator, which can get you there, where n is going to be the original exponent, and r is going to be the um, exponent of the b. So let's just practice that real quick on your calculator, then we'll do a harder one. Um, so for example, let me turn this on. Uh, by the way, NCR is in the math menu right here. Uh -oh. Push math, then go to PRB, probability, and oops, went too far. And then down to option three is NCR. So what you would do is you'd write two, and then you go to math, probability, and then NCR 
and then you, for example, put zero and we should get a one. We did. And then you could do two math NCR two, and that should be a, a, I'm sorry, one, and that should be a two. And it is. So that's another way to get these coefficients. So that's kind of a, a simple problem. Uh, let's try one that's a little bit longer because that's more, more interesting. Also, I don't want to do A's and B's. I want to put maybe an X in there this time. Um, so let's do uh, we do X plus three uh, to the fourth. Um, so this is a, a um, something you could multiply out by hand. It would be a pain. It would take a little bit of time, but it's doable. You have to do x plus three times x plus three times x plus three times x plus three and do the distributive property over and over and over. Um, so instead, I'm going to look at this and say, okay, uh, we've got a four right there. Right off the bat, I know I've got um, five terms. So we'll start with that. An X and a three, those are my A's and B's like we had last time. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna run out of space, aren't I? Let me, let me do that again. Let me do that again so I have more space. Blank, X, three. Blank, X, three. Blank, X, three. One, two, three, you gotta have two more. Sneak those in here, X, three. I'll just do sneak it on the bottom here, X, three. Okay, so those are my those are my uh, five terms this time. They all have to add up to four, so this is gonna be four, zero. And then we go down, because those have to add up to four. And then three and one. And then two and two. And then one and three, and finally a zero and four. So look, X went four, three, two, one, zero. And the three went zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, so now we need five coefficients, one, two, three, four, five. We'll, we'll do this with Pascal's triangle first, and then I'll do it with the calculator. So we've got that. Uh, draw your little ones down here, and that's two. And then draw another little one here. So three, two and one make three. And then we'll come down one more row. That's four. That's four, that's six. So you got one, two, three, four, five. This is the row I want. So my coefficients are gonna be one, four, six, four, one. And uh, you can verify some of those with the calculator. I won't do them all, but I'll just show you a couple of them. Like for example, this one right here, my second coefficient, the, the second exponent was one. My original exponent was four. Uh, so you can do four, uh, NCR one, and that should be a four. And then this one, uh, we got a six, let's try that one. Four, NCR, and this one is a two. So sure enough, that's a six. Um, so you can do all your coefficients that way if you want to, or with the Pascal's triangle. So let's finish this up now. So this is gonna be one X to the fourth because it's three to the zero is just, just one. And then this is gonna be four X cubed times three. Four times three makes 12. That's 12 X cubed right there. And then this is six times X squared times nine. So that's 54 X squared. And then this one is four times X times three cubed, that's 27. 27 times four makes 108. And it's just x to the one. And then finally, one x to the zero is one, three to the fourth is 81. So uh, binomial theorem gives you uh, what this guy multiplies out to be. It is that kind of long, tedious looking polynomial. And so that makes this doable um, even when you have a pretty big, big term. And let me show you one more catch on this. This is a popular ACT type of trick. So um, we're gonna have two X 
plus three to the seventh. And oh my goodness, that looks just gigantic. And the SAT or the ACT is going to say, what is uh, fifth term? And you know, when you're doing the ACT, the clock is the boogeyman. You got to do things fast. You know, I could sit here if I had all day and figure out the fifth term. But all you have to do here is you say, hmm, okay, I've got eight total terms because I got one more than seven. I don't have to find them all. All I have to do is I say, okay, the fifth term is going to be something 2x to a power and 3 to a power. And if it's the fifth term, I know, just look at my fingers. We started out, the first term had a 7 on the front. So 7. Uh, the sixth term had a, had a 6 on the front. Uh, I'm sorry, the, let me say it again. <laughs> the first term had a seven on the front. The second term had a, had, had a six, then a five, then a four, then a three. So we know this is going to be a three. I'm counting down. And then because these have to add up a seven, that's going to be a four. So I know that's going to be how they, uh, the, the back two pieces work. To get this number, all I need to remember is my NCR and say, hmm, this is four and my original number is seven. So I can get with my calculator, the number that goes right there, seven. It's gonna be a big one, I think. C4. And that's, oh my goodness, it's 35. Seven C4 is 35. This is gonna be 35. And then what's my term? Well, let's look, this is, there's a lot going on here. 35, two to the third is eight, and then X cubed. And then three to the four is 81. So you got to do all that, but watch this, 35 times 8 times 81 is 22,680 X cubed. And so that is your seven, that's your fifth term, sorry, that's your fifth term. Um, so that is a way to kind of beat the ACT test and use the binomial theorem to find a a one single term without having to do the entire thing, which had eight terms. So we'll stop there. I hope that helped you. Um, again, I'm really good to be back and I hope to see a lot more of you soon. Bye-bye.